Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In coming to this House today, we must be very sensitive and mindful of the many thousands of people in Northern Ireland and further afield who feel betrayed and let down by the actions of Her Majesty's Government. While we would have concerns about some of the wording of the motion and would have supported the amendment by the Ulster Unionist Party, which wasn't accepted, we do not want any other message to come from this House today other than victims cannot and should not be ignored in this way. A phrase that has often been used in our troubled past is that of perverting the course of justice. And sadly, the recent announcement by the government is the ultimate manifestation of just that. However, not for the first time have governments at Westminster, aided by willing accomplices in this chamber today, removed some of the very basic elements of a society that believes in doing what is right and not just what is politically expedient. The road to the government's latest announcements is littered with numerous acts of perverting the course of justice, actions that were designed to protect the victim maker rather than deliver justice to those who suffered at the hands of terrorists. The release of prisoners in 1998, a guarantee that anyone convicted in the future would only serve two years in jail, legislation to ensure that illegal guns decommissioned could not be tested ballistically so that those who used those guns in their murderous campaign of the innocent could not be brought to justice for their crimes. Letters of comfort, royal pardons, all done not to bring justice to the victims of terrorism, but rather to shield and protect the victim makers. The government's position paper claims a criminal justice approach is in stark contrast to the wider aims envisaged in the Belfast Good Friday Agreement of promoting societal reconciliation through acknowledgement recognition of different narratives and information recovery. For the Belfast Agreement's provisions to be now cited as justification for this acceleration in the denial of justice for innocent victims is a sad reflection on those who signed up to such an agreement. My party opposed that agreement and likewise rejects these plans. The real test of any fresh approach to legacy was ensuring the focus of investigations was balanced and proportionate given that the majority of murders were carried out by paramilitary terrorist organizations. Rather than find an answer to this difficult and sensitive question, the Secretary of State seems to have chosen a path which finds equivalence between the soldier and the police officer and those who planted the bomb or pulled the trigger. This, Mr. Speaker, is morally reprehensible. Nobody denies that the passage of time presents prosecutorial difficulties, but the answer is not to arbitrarily close down legal routes for innocent victims. This holds implications for the integrity and the foundations of the criminal justice system, not just in Northern Ireland, but across the United Kingdom. And surely yesterday's revelations in regards to the murder of Tom Oliver, I trust is a reminder that they are tentatively close to bringing to justice those who carried out that heinous crime. Then we've had the recent comments by the Deputy First Minister accusing the government of covering up the truth and putting its forces beyond the law while ignoring Republicans' blinded vision of the truth. Sadly, the standard used by the party opposite when it comes to truth was put on display for us all to see when the late Martin McGuinness told the Bloody Sunday Inquiry, I cannot answer that question because there is a Republican code of honour. For me to identify those people would be a betrayal. What of the denial for 40 years of the involvement of the IRA in the abduction and murder of Jean McConville? or the murder of the postal worker, Frank Kerr, or who knows what about the murder in this house of Robert McCartney. Thursday of this week will be the 44th anniversary of the murder 
of a prison officer, Thomas Fenton, Members, time is up. from Clough Mills in my constituency. I passed the place where he was murdered on my way here today. Let his memory not be sullied by these proposals, and I trust that they will be given the rejection from this House that they deserve. Thank you, and I call.